you have to I, go, but I, I have to talk to Julia. I have do, to continue right. talking to Julia for just a little bit after you go because we haven't covered some very specific UFO stuff that I promised oh, okay. that we right. touched on but didn't actually talk about in the podcast. So I have to close that loop. So thank I'm you for sorry, coming, sorry Ben. Missed the UFOs, but I'll, I'll, I'll catch it on on YouTube. I later. knew you. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, I knew you right. wanted to be there, but you'll. I'll be sure to send you the. Uh, the footage so you can hear unless it. the ufo abducts me first right, right. which well, is yeah. always a part. we're still not sure it hasn't never, already happened frankly yeah you never know all right, <laughs> it would explain all right. A lot. well yeah thank you ben. anyway Lots thanks love, great, great great conversation as always yeah as always awesome. talk to you later bye all, all right. right julia you mentioned some stuff in the podcast about um a UFO sighting around Russian missile silos or something? And well, it, certainly American what was all that silo, about? But also Russian missiles. Oh, um, well, oh, that's just kind of a well-known. This is well, I don't, like, I couldn't find anything about it on the internet. If you can oh, interesting. It, okay. When I so, looked, so I want to know okay. exactly what you were talking about. Yeah, sure. Sure. So let me just preface this. If you want to get the actual detailed information about this, I am going to summarize it. But the best way to, is to go to Explore SCU. Okay. Explore the word Explore S as in Sam C U dot O R G. Explore. Okay. Um, this it. is the scientific um, coalition for UAP studies. A bunch of scientists okay. work, and technologists working together to try to use open source intelligence to figure out what's going on with with UFOs and UAPs. And I'm sort Great. of in, vaguely involved in the background but so i can put a link to them in the description so yeah yeah okay yeah but they they did an analysis of um sort of um not sort of of uap that are ufos uap that appeared over missile silos um advanced weapons systems anything nuclear nuclear sites like fukushima for instance there was a famous sighting of a UFO over Fukushima, anything having to do with nuclear stuff. Okay. Um, now, so if you decide, so I'm, I'm going to be agnostic in this conversation because the whole point of UFOs, UAP, is the word unidentified. We don't know, we what, don't they know what they are. We don't know what they are. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so if there's multiple theories and the sort of the top contenders are, um, are uh, US very, it's so secret nuclear, uh, so secret uh, programs that we, that most, people in the intelligence community don't know about them. Um, foreign uh, government secret pro programs that are so secret that most people in the US, uh, people who observe weapon systems and, and aerospace stuff don't know about them. Um, time travelers from humans in the future who are coming back in time. Okay. Um, and then there's the alien hypothesis, which is also related to the multi-dimensional hypothesis. You could also say the time travel one is related to like multi or, you know, Sure, sure, sure. But just, just, to go, hypothesis. just to go so, back a step. Yeah. There no it's not in dispute that the objects were seen, like oh, and captured we, on radar and 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 potentially tried to communicate with and responded as if they were intelligently driven. All those things aren't in dispute. All those things are not in dispute. Right. Okay, well, that's important information. No, because... Right, because that's what makes them interesting. Like, it's boring. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. Oh, it's Starlink. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a well, balloon. Or did like, you that's even not see interesting. It? I saw it. No, you didn't. I was standing yeah. next to you. Like, that so kind I'm of shit, right? About, right? I'm talking about things like things like that 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 can be captured in multiple ways and that by multiple people. It, that's what when they become interesting. It does to not me, become so they interesting. They become interesting, I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> right. So, um, and there are incidents, I mean, so if you go to um, the SCU website. Um, so again, what are we talking were, about, though? Are we talking about a flying saucer hovering above a nuclear power yeah, plant? Interesting, different shapes, triangles. There's been seen this um, cube in a sphere, embedded in a sphere. That's a common one. Um, these disc shapes. There's the Tic Tac object that looks like a Tic Tac, except big. There's things going in and out of the ocean. I mean, all these things have have been observed, you know, by Navy um, and, fighter pilots, and, Air Force. And they're recorded, it's on radar, and then they move in a way where it can't be one oh, of yeah, right. Now that's what makes them... sideways too fast or up too fast, right? Yeah, that's or there's orbs, right? Um, that's what makes them interesting. And that because because no one really cares about like 
oh, this thing moved in a way that made it seem like any technology that we have, or, you know, like, who cares about those? What's interesting are the ones that are doing weird stuff. Or are these things that are look orbs that don't even seem solid, they seem like balls of energy or ball lightning or something that they zip around and they could have physiological impacts on people. Um, so there's a whole group of people who are studying this. Um, uh, certainly, people probably know about Avi Loeb at, at Harvard, who's an uh, astrophysicist who got who created the Galileo project, which is uh, trying to study uh, UAP. Um, and so, and there's plenty of groups. And I actually wrote an article about all the different groups and I've interviewed all the different oh, group, uh, okay. leads. And we can put the link to that article nice. up here. So people okay. can get up to speed. But that's a couple of years yeah. old. So, you know. It's, right, right. It's so it's still not that it's old. new stuff. But for me, I couldn't get a straight answer out of anybody. And some of the articles on this stuff aren't exactly put together in an evidence-based way. Like, you know, here are, you know, 20 videos from the 20 different people around the world that all saw this, right? Here well, are, yeah, well, so we there's need, problems with right? declassification. So there's a whole effort. There's another website to put on. There's a there's a great um, effort called uh, Declassify UAP. Okay. That's an organization that's trying to go through the governmental methods of trying to put pu pu public pressure on the folks who classify this stuff to declassify it. And, and, and they know how to how to do that in, in a legal way that's nonviolent, and I, just, I, I really respect the people who are doing it because they're like nonviolent. Well, well, no, I mean, like they're, they're just like, look, we get that we have this system, and there's ways to get things declassified, and now we're going to use those ways. I think that's awesome, but yeah. there are also reasons to classify. It's a very arbitrary way. There isn't any real way to get things declassified. It's it's very arbitrary. The powers that be just wake up one morning and decide to declassify. No, no, no. There's a, there's a real way. There's a declassification, declassification board. No, process. no. There, there's a whole process. Yeah. There's a real process because it's a real problem and the intelligence community knows that overclassification is a problem and it has a process for yes. getting things. Like that is yes. all true. It's not a complete but shit what show. What part of the of the well, I think it is a shit show, but that's just my opinion. But the and most of my friends in the intelligence community would say it was a shit show, even though they're trying. It's it's not necessarily their the people, the employees of the intelligence agencies' fault. They would also like to be able to do more intelligent things with the data and stuff like that. But I'm just saying, are we only talking about intelligence agency gathered stuff that we're trying to get declassified because my well, understanding no, was that they're just like people all over the world seeing stuff and making videos yeah so video evidence is no longer that great right because you can just I mean, make you it can, you could make yeah. it so the the, the evidence is multi-sensor you want multi-sensor evidence radar you know infrared camera um, yeah audio and you want hopefully want it from a reputable source you know air force navy pilot or whatever uh -huh. um, also ideally of course underwater sensors and satellite information would be super helpful but of course that's the kind of stuff that we have to um that we have to think about classification right so so the the, the sort of sensors that are the most helpful and really sort of figuring out what's going on the public doesn't have access to for classification reasons. And so right. um, they don't want a lot of people out in the ocean with military grade technology looking for UFOs. Well, so the biggest secret <laughs> in the ocean is- Even though it's is probably where, already happening. Right, no, so the biggest secret in the ocean is the Russian submarines, where are they, right? So that's why, you, that's a pretty big secret, Russian nuclear submarines, that's a pretty okay. Im important secret. And so, so everything has a reason, but then that's why you need the declassification board to actually talk about okay let's be very clear about why we're classifying this and whether there's another way people could figure this out and what is the OSINT telling people and if, if people could figure it out through I'm sorry um, open source intelligence if people could figure something out through open source intelligence then do we declassify it because it's figure outable or not so these are the, so it's um these are not easy questions to answer if your job is to try to protect the national security of the United not really States. But, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, at the same time, like there has to be this public pressure to say, you know, when you could release stuff, please release it so that we have this information because it would be super interesting if UAP, UFOs, whatever is going on with right. them, whether it's multidimensional or time travel or aliens, if there had a special interest in nuclear silos or, or in, um, in, and things that were related to nuclear phenomena, I have to plug in my computer, then um, 
that would be super interesting. And I think it'd be great for the public to know. Right. And um, since it's a nuclear thing, I mean, if there anything having to do with, um, you know, missile silos and things like that, or it's often hard to get information about. Well, um, that, that would go back to for nuclear, yeah. you know, security or sorry, national security, not nuclear security. Oh, both. <laughs> yeah. Both. Yeah. And so that we go back to the reasons for declassification. So this is why based on open source intelligence and reports from fighter pilots and such. And, you know, this is what we saw on the radar. And here are some videos that we can release. Um, that's why we know that there's this interest in the nuclear stuff and we don't understand that's on the outside of that world, but we don't understand why, right? And I'm not sure on the, in, I doubt on the inside of the world, there's a really good understanding of why. Okay, cool. So that's, a, so this isn't a new thing. This is something that's been happening for, for years. And it's just a, another reason why it would be nice to, um, you know, not have to talk about this stuff on the shadows kind of thing and just yeah. be able to share information yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. It would be great to be grown ups and to not worry about <laughs> Oh, forget it. I grown know. ups, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> what am I thinking? No way. Forget about it. Um, okay, cool. I'm just gonna look really quick uh, in our quest in our questions from our audience super quick because they have been uh someone thanked you uh, oh, about nice. about bringing up unconditional love and time travel in a concoction for endless pondering. Well, that's so I, wonderful. I have a, a lovely comment by I Doffler. And I so think um, very noble. Zephyr of Voxel's comment zero BS is very flattering. Cams with some you have, oh yes. So that's a great example of another source. Cause you basically need videos or whatever radar would be nice, but whatever you need um, instrument readings from different sources, different reputable sources for the same thing. So you can at least agree that it's happening. I mean, right now I feel like we felt, I felt 20 or 30 years ago when you just, you can't get beyond a certain point of even oh, talking about it and yeah, you look yeah. down upon for even bringing it up. Right. No, but it's 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 agreed upon. I mean, it's very that it's like seen. Okay. There was the July twenty sixth. Um, I believe it was July twenty sixth, or maybe it was August twenty sixth. So twenty sixth of some month in the summer, this summer, congressional testimony about it, and um, you know, especially oh, well, Ryan. Yeah, especially okay. Ryan Graves. Look up that testimony. He he was excellent. Okay, great. Because yeah, yeah Ed Mitchell was telling me the famous astronaut um, uh, was telling me that when I interviewed him in two thousand eight that um the uh, um existence of these things and for him he was talking specifically about light objects mm -hmm, um, like orbs. Li you know orbs things that would just show up when 747 pilots or air force pilots were flying around in the lower um uh lower elevations um and then but then yeah so he was saying that they're pretty much instructed to not talk about it and that it's just something that they all see and everybody knows to not talk about it. And that was in 2008. Um, but I don't think it, you know, a lot has, has changed, but I thought that was really interesting too. And it's sort of my attitude about a things that you can't, you can't explain that you saw, right. You just, I'll you fix, can yeah. still make a note that you saw it. You don't know what yeah. it was, but it happened, yeah. you know, and you can just make a note of it. And then, you know, it's not like you're going to, you don't really want to try to go around convincing people about the weird thing that happened or whatever, but then, you know, how would other people know about it? But I'm not really trying to figure out what it was. It's just, just knowing that it was there, you know? Right. Well, I mean, in defense of the air force, things have gotten better. Like they actually now have a, they're encouraging their pilots to report these things and, and definitely look into what Ryan Graves oh, good. has built. So things have He's, changed. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Graves has built a, an organization um, for, for, I think mostly military pilots um, that's basically focused on air safety and UAP. So, nice. which I think is a really good angle. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I'll be sure to include that stuff. Um, I'm sure I'm going to pull this out as a clip and we'll have a, all, all those links in the description. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for coming on the show. And um, the podcast should be up Monday and um, everybody can take a look at that. 
and uh, it's unconditional love, time travel, UFOs, the multiverse, and everything with Julia Mossbridge. <laughs> and, and Desi, let's just send some love to Desi for her circus. We'll send some love to, to Desi, and she is sending love back, and we have to do it psychically, unfortunately. Thanks so but... much for hanging out with us, Julia. Oh, oh see, it worked. Really better. <laughs> it did work. See what happens? It works. Yes. All right. Goodbye, everybody, and everybody. Peace. Peace.